dear students today we will talk about canonically conjugate quantities in the previous video you have been briefly introduced to heisenberg's uncertainty principle wherein you have learned that a pair of quantities whose product has the dimensions of action that is whose units are joule second say energy has the unit of joule and time has the unit of second joule second constitutes an action all such pair of quantities are greater or equal to h cross and they obey heisenberg's uncertainty principle according to which if we are more sure about the measurement of one parameter we are less sure about the other and vice versa today we will try to approach the same concept through canonically conjugate quantities now how do we understand that in general if you have any two real numbers say a b we know their product a b is the same thing as b a that means a b minus b a is equal to zero similarly if you have a pair of complex numbers say c and d their product c and d is equal to same thing as d c so that c d minus d c is equal to zero these types of relations are called as commutation relations so i write for them that these are commutation relations now what about two uh, matrices say a and b is the product of a b same as that of b a well in general we know that about matrices this is not true matrices do not obey the law of commutation now what about two operators a and b again two operators the product of two operators is generally not obeying commutation relation so we can write that in general operators do not commute that is they do not obey commutation relations now in order to understand that let us pick up an example of that of position and momentum so for two operators x and p Remember, I am putting a cap on X and a cap on P, which indicates that it's not a mere position, but the position operator. It's not a mere momentum, but a momentum operator. And their commutator is denoted by this square long bracket. Remember, in quantum mechanics, I have told you that you have to be very specific about notations. As for instance, expectation value is denoted by curly brackets of this kind and not of any other kind. Similarly, a commutator between two quantities is represented by a square bracket, a long bracket of this kind and not of any other kind. Remember, now this commutator between two operators is defined as xp minus px, then enclosed in the simple braces, right? Now we know that these operators do not mean anything unless they do not operate on a wave function. So let us make this operate on a wave function. Now this xp commutator operating on a wave function psi is equal to xp minus px operating on a wave function psi. Now let's do that individually first this with this and then this with this. Now this is x, for p I can write its operator as h cross by i dou by dou x of psi. And next is for p again I can write h cross by i dou by dou x of here you have x and then you have psi. Now this is equal to x h cross by i dou psi by dou x minus this will split into two factors differentiation of this and then differentiation of this so you have first function into differentiation of second plus second into so it is this dou by dou x of x and then you have this psi right of course this and this factors are identical and they will cancel we are left with this will go we are left with minus h cross by i psi so it is h cross or i h cross well this minus sign will go when we have brought this iota upwards and psi on left side you have this 
of psi and psi goes, we are left with i h cross only. That is commutator of x and p is equal to i h cross only. So since we are getting an iota term at the end, this reflects the uncertainty in this product. Now, if you recall that we have, when we had tried to calculate this result classically by means of a diffraction experiment, a beam of electrons passing through a narrow slit, we had obtained a product of 2h. I hope if you recall that we had made to we had made the electron beam to pass through this and then I hope you recall we had calculated delta y delta p y which had come equal to 2h. But this is a quantum mechanical approach which, which is much better. It further introduces a iota term which reflects the uncertainty in the simultaneous measurement of x and p. Now you may ask me is this uncertainty because our instruments of measurement are not efficient and I will say no. Is this efficiency because the observer, you and me, are not efficient to measure the things? And I will say no. But the answer is that this uncertainty is the inherent property of the system. For instance, let me try to make you understand that by means of a beautiful example. Suppose these are the four blades of a fan. And you have marked a dot somewhere on the fourth blade. One, two, three. And on the fourth blade you have marked a dot. But once this fan is set rotating, what do you get? You get a continuous flap of circle moving at a very high velocity. So how are you able to, are you able to locate that dot? Well, of course, no. It appears that at a given time, this dot appears together at many positions. So this is true of electron as well. Since electron is moving and that too with a very high speed, I hope all of you remember that in the first orbit, the speed of the electron is 1 by 137 of velocity of light it's moving so fast and in this continuous flap our instruments our methods of measurement are incapable of measuring the exact position or the momentum of the electron so that is why the wave functions that are associated with the systems are chosen to be complex and not real because this kind of a system is subject to many limitations in terms of accuracy and our instruments, our methods of observation are not capable to handle them in a discrete, absolute way. So I hope that improves upon your understanding of Heisenberg's uncertainty principle from a quantum mechanical approach.